Warning, this video features one or more ships that are primarily acquired through gambling mechanics. The chance of winning such ships is very low, and there's no guarantee that you will win regardless of how many times you gamble. If you think you might have a problem with gambling addiction, please stop the video and seek help immediately. Greetings everyone and welcome back to another ship review. Today we're taking a look at the Yak, also known as yet another Crossfield, also known as the Crossfield Refit. It was relatively recently added to the Far From Home lockbox. It's an interesting ship with a fun console and a really good trait. One of the selling features is the new skin, which includes the 32nd century detached nacelles. There are some controversies over this, many don't like them, but I'll admit they look better on this ship than they did on the Janeway, at least in my opinion. Let's take a moment to talk about the stats. The Crossfield Refit, despite having a mastery of a bog standard science vessel, is built more like a tactical ship. It has a 1.4 hull modifier and a 1.1 shield modifier. These are both quite good due to it being a premium ship, but have the emphasis on the hull, which is unusual for a science vessel. The 4-3 weapon layout is also generous as well, as most non-specialized science variants typically just have 6 weapon slots. As a full Miracle Worker ship, it has 30 bonus power, with 15 to auxiliary, it also has a battle cloak. Continuing with the tactical focus, the refit has a combination of Miracle Worker and Command Seating. This is a potent combo, but not for EPG builds. I'm reviewing this on my Engineer rather than my Science character, and due to all the emphasis on tactical features, I was able to just use a relatively standard Kinetic build, which worked out just fine. However, the console layout is still science-based, with 5 for science and 3 for tactical. Additionally, it only has a lieutenant command seat, which is fine for solo play, casual queues, and random TFOs, but isn't so great for high-end channel pugs or coordinated runs if you plan on using concentrate firepower. Problem is that your rank 2 ability will usurp the higher rank applied by an ally. Personally, I find the tactical focus on this ship to be a hindrance rather than an asset. It's nice that it has the versatility to do different builds without needing a transformation effect, but that makes it a jack of all trades. The lack of a commander tactical, limited tactical console slots, and only 7 weapons are a problem when compared to the other tactical ships. You'll probably do better using a science build, but the specializations aren't going to help you much. It has plenty of universal seats though, so you can slot in a lot of science abilities. The console, the Quajon Assault Craft, gives some whole cap, whole healing, and miracle worker cooldown reduction. The clicky does what it says on the tin and launches a Quajon pet. This console exists almost entirely for flavor, which is fine. There's definitely a place for those. It's hard to notice the little guy flying around in the soup of special effects, but that might not be a problem for you. The trait, Universal Designs, is one I've already done an entire video about, and I'm happy to say it was patched in our favor. Using Universal Consoles gives you a stack that provides 2% crit chance and 10% crit severity for 20 seconds and it can stack up to 5 times for some very high buffs. Once you have your stacks, you only need one console activation for 20 seconds to refresh all of them. There are multiple consoles that can do this, such as the Emulating Phaser Lance, and the much cheaper but less useful Repair Platform. It's a great trait, but it does require an additional console to make the most of it. I'm not going to dwell on it anymore. So where does this leave us in terms of score? I'm going to give the refit a performance score of 4 stars. Don't get me wrong, it's a powerful ship, but 5 stars are reserved for the very best, and this just isn't it. Any science build you do will not be as good as science builds you could do on other science ships, and while it can turn out a passable kinetic build, it definitely lacks compared to other ships in that category. In terms of accessories, it has to be 5 stars. The trade is simply too good. I thought about taking it down a star due to the need to pair it with a compatible console to get the full value, but it's just too good, and it has to get full marks. It should come as no surprise that a new premium ship is good. 
Pretty much all of the recent releases have been in this vein. The real question is whether it's worth the money, and in my opinion, it's a no. For a similar amount of money, you can get the 10th Anniversary Bundle, assuming they ever re-release the freaking thing, and get all three Crossfield variants of the other Crossfield variants rolled into one, along with the other nine ships. I'll be honest, I didn't want to do this review. I'm just not excited about this ship at all. However, it wouldn't be fair to people who are excited about it, and I won't make you feel bad for that. It's a good ship, but not the best, not even the best Crossfield. If you're a top percentile DPS chaser, then the trait will appeal to you, but otherwise it's only for the role players who want the Season 3 updates. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.